broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Exploring menopause and hormone replacement therapy with Andy Maloney, our RN and menopause wellness coach. We are so excited today to dive into a topic that's affecting millions of women out there, hormone replacement therapy in menopause. And with us today, Andy Maloney, an RN and menopause wellness coach and owner of Coaching by Andy, and Andy spelled A-N-D-E-E. She's also the organizer of the Hot and Bothered Cafe Menopause Support Group. Welcome back to the show today, Andy. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Jill. I'm so excited to be here and talk about this like well, incredibly important I topic know. Today. We are excited to have you back. First and foremost, uh, before we get into hormone replacement therapy, what that is, just tell us all the ways we can reach you. Absolutely. So I have the website. So that's coachingbyandy.com. So coachingbyandee.com. Um, Gmail also is coachingbyandy at Gmail. Um, Those are probably the two best ways to get me at this point. Beautiful. Well, let's talk a little bit about hormone replacement therapy. What is it specifically? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, hormone replacement therapy, you'll hear me refer to it as HRT, because that's a lot of words to say. Um, It's a treatment that replaces our hormones that naturally decline as women approach and go through menopause. Um, And these hormone fluctuations, as we all know, can lead to those uncomfortable symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats, vaginal dryness, and of course, even some other things like risk of bone fractures. Um, So HRT really just aims to alleviate these symptoms by restoring that that balance that we've kind of lost. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Mm -hmm. people hear of HRT and they really don't know what exactly is hormone replacement therapy, if you don't mind sharing that with us and why women might even consider this. Yeah. So there's actually two, there are different types of HRT. Um, So there's two primary types, um, estrogen and progesterone therapy. Now, estrogen alone is often used for women who no longer have a uterus. So those that have had a hysterectomy. Um, However, women that do still have their uterus generally need a combination of both estrogen and progesterone. And that's because if we only gave them estrogen alone, that would actually stimulate that uterine lining, which can increase the risk of uterine cancer. Um, So adding that progesterone helps protect the lining and reduce the risk of developing that uterine cancer. Interesting. And there's so many different types of hormones, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. Within the HRT? Yep. So there, there, you know, it's a complex decision. There are other options besides estrogen and progesterone. So the recent guidelines from the Menopause Society, which is formerly known as NAMS, um, really focuses on estrogen and progesterone. But it's important to remember that there are other hormone therapies that exist, like testosterone therapy, right? So that's an option that some women are exploring. So you're going to hear me say this throughout our time today, but it's crucial that women have that open conversation with their healthcare provider because they're going to help you weigh the benefits and risks of all the available options and really find the best treatment plan for you. Well, also, you know, people, you know, can be a little confused that they're not sure what to do, right? Because you hear about estrogen, progesterone, but there's other forms of treatment too. Right. So that's the testosterone that I was just talking about. So testosterone is the third therapy option. Yeah, that some women are exploring. So again, you know, there are other options. There's non-hormonal options too. So again, that's why it's so important to have that conversation with your healthcare provider or your hormones specialist to really just determine what's right for you because you want to weigh those benefits and risks. Well, I appreciate the advice. And I know there's a lot of questions. Also, people talk about risks. What do you know about that, Andy? Would you like to enlighten us a little on that? Yeah. So, you know, we talk about safety and risks all the time, right? So there has been a lot of discussion and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, you know, the recent findings from the Menopause Society, um, and that's been endorsed by numerous women's health organizations, organizations really have offered some encouraging news. So basically what they're saying is for healthy women under the age of 60 who are within that like 10 year window of menopause onset, the benefits of hormone therapy really do outweigh the risks most times when it comes to managing menopause symptoms. So it is essential to discuss your individual health history with your doctor to determine the best course of action. Interesting. Now, also, it's uh, really, you know, reassuring that, uh, you know, people out there really can get the help they need. And what about people looking for these qualified healthcare professionals? Where can they turn? 
Well, there's a lot of online providers now because people are finding that they're not getting what they need from their GYNs. But the best place that I can direct the listeners to is checking out the North American Menopause Society or NAMS, the Menopause Society, whatever they're called now, for a list of those menopause friendly doctors, because that's that's really the starting point, because they're going to be the ones to help guide you towards um, a healthcare provider who can address your specific needs, because those providers have been trained specifically in menopause treatment. All right. Well, also, you know, while HRT is known for addressing hot flashes, night sweats, uh, you mentioned there's also significant benefits. Tell us a little more about this. That is right. So, you know, HRT, of course, offers relief from those classic menopause symptoms, but the impact really extends far beyond that. And that's where we're talking about the benefits for our heart, bone, and even vaginal health. Um, The research shows that the use of HRT is safe and beneficial. So again, for women who are within that 10 year window of starting their menopause and are in good health, really HRT can offer protection for the cardiovascular system um, by helping maintain those healthy cholesterol levels and reducing the risk of heart disease. Plus, it actually plays a crucial role in bone health, um, helping to prevent osteoporosis and fractures by helping to maintain or improve our bone density. Wow. I'm learning a lot here, too. And I hope our (laughs) listeners are, too. Really, it's not uh, just about comfort, right? But long-term health. It is. Exactly. So, and of course, we don't want to forget about vaginal health, too, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Vaginal estrogen therapy is another form of HRT that actually can significantly improve symptoms like dryness and discomfort and pain during intercourse. Um, And, you know, that alone can just dramatically enhance a woman's quality of life. Well, it's so funny because I, at my age, I'm 46 and I'm not premenopausal yet. I'm close to it, I assume, but I'm having these types of issues. And my regular OBGYN last year was just like, oh, well, it's okay. Just try this lubrication or try that. And I'm like, but I just feel like that's not the answer. And Mm -hmm. just for those out there who may have a dog and have to see him again next month, I just made an appointment, but I didn't feel like he was really in tune with my needs. And and now is every OBGYN, you know, in tune to help people with menopause or they think they are or they're not, you know, this is where it gets confusing because I have a lot of women and uh, my friends who are going through it who said they're regular doctors didn't help them the way they should. Sorry to go off course here, but I'm just curious about that. No, I think that's probably the number one thing I hear, not just with my clients, but also with, you know, my friends were all of a certain age going through this. So same thing. You either feel very dismissed. They're not hearing you. They're not listening to you. I went through that same thing with my GYN provider. Same thing. Went in with this kind of laundry list of these are all the things happening to me. And it was just like, oh, well, here's, here's some lube you can try. And I'm like, Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> that's exactly you know? what happened. And I'm like, like, that's the best you got is some lube I can try. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So definitely, um, I think there's some training that and reeducation that needs to happen with our providers and it's getting there. We're just not there a hundred percent yet. Got it. All right. Well, HRT is really powerful and it can help so many with menopause. But, um, you know, how do you discuss this with your healthcare provider? Let's talk about that because it's a little personal. It's a little embarrassing. It's uncomfortable, but we got to go there. It is. You're right. Um, So, again, the decision whether or not to use HRT at the base level is a deeply personal one. Okay, so it's not suitable for every woman. So again, that's why it's essential to have that open and honest conversation with your doctor. Um, They can assess your individual health history, your symptoms and your risk factors to determine if HRT is actually a suitable option for you. And remember, HRT is just one piece of a comprehensive menopause care plan. So for some women, you know, the alternative treatments or lifestyle modifications may be more appropriate for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, what is this comprehensive, um, you know, health plan that you mentioned specifically? Right. So while HRT can be incredibly beneficial, it's Uh important to consider other lifestyle factors as well. So nutrition, right? Exercise, stress management. And of course, the big one, getting enough sleep. These are Uh all crucial components of overall well-being during menopause. Because I don't know about you, Jill, but when I don't sleep well, I... My day is just, I'm done, right? I can't function. I'm just, I'm a mess. Um, So really it's about creating that holistic approach to managing symptoms, not just here, here's some cream, here's a pill, right? We've got to look at the whole big picture. 
I love it. Thank you for sharing that. My goodness. Now, also, um, you know, the Women's Health Initiative or the WHI uh, did a study right back in 2002, but they often gets blamed for HRT stigma. So tell yeah. us about what this uh, initiative is, was, and clarify this misunderstanding, which really arose from this study. Yeah, absolutely. So the WHI, they call it the Women's Health Initiative. It was a groundbreaking breaking study, but it was very misinterpreted. Um, it came under some harsh criticism for failing to clarify that the studies were focused on older women, 60 and older, uh. who were taking a specific hormone formulation. So the findings tended to be oversimplified, and then they were sensationalized in the media, which then led to this big false belief that all HRT is bad for us, which created, of course, a lot of anxiety and suspicion about HRT that unfortunately is still with us out there today. Um, when in reality, the newer formulations and personalized approaches really do offer that significant benefit for many women. Ah, interesting, because, you know, this is um, pretty amazing. You know, we are going through this. I can't believe they said 60 year older. What, when does menopause happen, by the way? What is the uh, approximate age? Age. So typically, you know, we can see it as young as 36. Okay. Average age is about 51, 52. But it can go from, from 36 to 65 easily, no problem. It just depends. Everybody's different. All right. Well, back to the myths and misconception here. Again, we're talking about menopausal symptoms for everyone who is tuning in. Uh, this is a great conversation, Andy. Um, you know, how can we differentiate the older studies with the more current research? And what is current research saying? Yeah, so modern HRT options, of course, are safer and more effective than ever before because we have that better understanding of the nuances involved. So again, that's why it's important to work with your healthcare provider or hormone specialist who is knowledgeable about these advancements. Interesting. Now, hold on. Let's talk about um, some more of the common misconceptions, right? Um, do you want to shed some more light on this and some of the maybe the other options mm -hmm. that are available today? Yep, absolutely. So, you know, the HRT landscape has evolved significantly. Um, we now have access to a wider range of formulations, including those that actually mimic the body's natural hormones. So we'll, though it's, you're going to hear that term bioidentical, yeah. right? So these bioidentical uh, options mm -hmm. can actually be delivered through patches, through pills, wow. and even creams. So, you know, really this diversity allows for that tailored treatment plan based on your individual needs and preferences. That does sound promising, right? <laughs> There's yeah. also, though, a lot of buzz around um, compounded bioidentical hormones. So are they really superior to FDA-approved options? Uh, so, again, that term bioidentical, yeah. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds great, right? We're like, oh, it's more natural and it's safe. However, it's really important to understand the distinction between compounded and what they call FDA-approved formulations, so compounded hormones are, are not subject to the same rigorous testing, which raises those concerns about the consistency and safety, whereas you have your FDA approved bioidentical op options, and they do offer that safer, more reliable alternative because they've been tested. Okay, so they typically tend to be less expensive than the non approved types. So again, Always best to discuss the options with your hormone specialist or your healthcare provider. All right. And at this time, remind us of all the ways we can contact you, please. <laughs> yep. Coachingbyandy.com is my website. So it's coachingbyande.com. And of course, my email is coachingbyandy at gmail.com. Yay. Thank you so much. Now, also, uh, do you want to talk about uh, some other common, um, you know, increased risk or myth or misconception? I've heard about mm -hmm. heart disease. And yes. what's what's the, the truth with that? Yeah. So, you know, the link between HRT and heart disease is is a complex one. I'm not going to get into the weeds with it. But older studies like that Women's Health Initiative really kind of painted an incomplete picture, mm -hmm. suggesting that HRT increased the risk of heart attacks and strokes and breast cancer. So again, it's crucial to consider factors like the type of hormone, the age of the woman, and the duration of the treatment. So again, in many cases, when HRT is initiated within that 10-year window of menopause, the benefits for heart health really do outweigh the risks. Well, also, um, the other myth you hear about a lot is about cancer. Now, is it true mm -hmm. estrogen causes cancer? Tell us your take on that. 
So, and I think that's probably the most common fear we hear right out there. And I hear that a lot from my clients, but it's really not supported by current evidence. And in fact, some studies suggest that estrogen may actually have a protective effect against certain types of cancer. So again, have your regular checkups. Those are crucial, right? Have your screenings. And then for healthy women under 60 or are within that 10 year of menopause onset, again, the benefits of hormone therapy on heart health and bone density and brain function and just overall well-being really do outweigh the risks. Interesting. Well, you know, um, many women also feel that uh, HRT is kind of like a one size fits all solution for menopausal symptoms, but is that really accurate? No, it's definitely not. You know, we're all different, right? So HRT is definitely a valuable tool in the menopause management toolbox, but it's literally one piece of the puzzle. So again, those lifestyle factors like sleep, nutrition, exercise, and stress management can significantly impact how women experience menopause. And again, that's why my coaching program focuses on creating that personalized plan that addresses these areas alongside the potential benefits and risks of HRT. So again, every woman's experience with menopause is unique. And that's why it's so important to work closely with your healthcare provider, because they're going to help assess your needs, recommend appropriate treatments and monitor your progress. That's a big one, the monitoring piece. And then, you know, by combining that expertise of your healthcare provider with the proactive approach of lifestyle changes, Mm -hmm. you really can significantly improve your quality of life during menopause. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's what we are here to do. And you are, uh, clearly. And uh, it's so sad that there's so much misinformation out there. How do people advocate for themselves? Yeah, that's that's a big one. So, you know, I'm a big believer education is key, right? Knowledge is power. So the more you understand about menopause and your options, the better equipped you're going to be to have that productive conversation with your doctor. Um, So find healthcare providers or hormone specialists who specialize in women's health and are up to date on the latest research. I can't stress that enough. So remember, you know, you do deserve to feel your best during this life stage and you have the right to quality care. Ah, I love that. Well, um, you know, let's talk about this again. How do we really approach that healthcare provider? It's important to do this because I have my appointment next week with my regular gynecologist. Not sure that I will stick with him. Uh, but tell me, uh, you know, how do you bring this up to them? Yeah. So preparation, that's a big one. So write down, start writing your symptoms down, you know, maybe keep a journal or, you know, mood journal, food journal, whatever, gather your information about your symptoms, their frequency, their severity, you know, do your research on HRT options, including the benefits and risks and alternatives. You have to be your own advocate in this day and age. So bring a list of questions to your appointment, be open and honest about your symptoms and concerns, and do not hesitate to ask for clarification. If you don't understand something, Ask for additional information because that strong partnership with your healthcare provider is crucial. You know, so those regular follow-up appointments are essential to assess your treatment plan and make any of those necessary adjustments. And I'm going to shout this from the rooftops, but if you're not getting what you need from your current healthcare provider, GYN, find a new one. I myself have now gone through three until I found the one that, you know, we had a good fit. She actually listens. Wow. And, you know, I'm I'm feeling better than I ever have with my my hormone therapy. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. We we love this. So get that everything prepared. Yeah. Uh, and again, <laughs> uh, if it's not working, find someone else. Now, I appreciate you really, you know, clarifying on these misconceptions. But let me also ask this, because I know we're supposed to consult with our health care provider, of course. But tell me, there's people like you out there that um, aren't doctors, right, that right. are coaches. Tell me right. how you as a coach can help us, uh, you know, through this. And this is your specialty. So again, we can go to a coach as well for menopause wellness coaching. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm love helping women, you know, I love helping them become their own advocates, because it's important for women to have the accurate information so that they can feel empowered to take control of their well being. Um, You know, and then don't forget about the power of community and support, too. So, you know, not just working with me as a menopause coach, you know, because I do provide that additional guidance um, in addition to accountability and emotional support. But, you know, there's also 
lots of support groups out there. There's Facebook groups. I myself run a support group on Facebook called the Hot and Bothered Cafe. You can look us up and join us. We have monthly, you know, menopause support meetings. Um, but as a coach, I'm going to help you set some goals. We're going to develop strategies and we're going to celebrate your successes together because you will feel better on the other side of this. I promise you. Aw, thank you so much. All right, we still got some more time here left. We got five more minutes in the show to continue this discussion. And also, um, how else, uh, you know, basically, you know, you mentioned, you know, the expertise in this is invaluable. And it's so funny. I was listening to, there's some podcasts the other day about menopause. Everyone's talking about it. Do you, I, I, I maybe because I'm older or is it because society's more accepting of it now? I feel like it, a lot of people are finally talking about it. I think, it's it's twofold there, Jill, because okay. we are getting we're are we are of a certain age, right? So yeah. these are the things that we're kind of tuned into now, right? I know for me, once I decided to become a coach, then it was like, gosh, this is all I'm hearing now. Just like you said, everybody starts <laughs> to talk about it, but I'm glad they are because first, let's face it, our moms and grandmoms, they didn't do us any justice because they didn't tell us anything about this. At least mine didn't, you know, what to expect. It, you know, you just didn't talk about it before. Yeah. So I'm really happy that the narrative is shifting, right? We're, we're starting to hear more about it. We're starting to see more, especially celebrities, right? You've got Halle Berry and, and Drew Barrymore and, you know, all the people are starting to actually talk about it. So it's great. We're finally, you know, bringing a voice to it. And, and to know and we're not alone. And exactly. uh, for those new timers who are just tuning in and hear you as a coach, but by the way, could you share just a little about your medical background? Cause that's pretty intense and you do have a lot of knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a registered nurse. I started my career in labor and delivery. Um, so I've always had a passion for women's health. Um, I left the bedside and went into some case management. I've done some workers comp um, training, education, and now I'm a QA analyst for a workers comp case management company. So kind of been all over the place, but never lost my love for women's health. Um, just kind of gone from one end of the spectrum of helping pregnant moms to now, you know, all of us who are kind of going through this this other stage of our lives. Oh well, and in our last few minutes together, what el- other piece of information do you want to make sure we uh, share about this? I think the biggest thing is, you know, your your symptoms matter. It's okay to not be okay. Um, you know, you're not losing your mind. I promise you. you know, this is all completely normal. And if you feel unsupported you know, please seek out help, whether that's from your healthcare provider or a support group or me as a coach, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of great information out there. And there's a lot of people who are willing to help and support you through this time. um, So that you don't feel so alone going through this. And and could you just share a typical, you know, how how long you work with a client for? How how does it work to be coached? And, you know, the, the accountability factor and how often you're speaking? Yep, absolutely. So I have several different options. Um, I do have like a three session program, which is more for women who kind of like, okay, these are the things I want to work on, you know, I want to work on nutrition, I want to work on, you know, getting my energy levels back, that kind of thing. So then we just kind of focus in on that. But then I have a bigger 90 day program that really kind of focuses on everything. So we start with the basics of what is menopause, you know, understanding the terminology behind it. But then we move into nutrition, you know, eating for hormone health, how you can combat, you know, the fatigue and, and, you know, looking at some exercises you can do, what kind of recipes, prioritizing protein. There's a lot of things that we can do with lifestyle adjustments um, to kind of help you get through this. And the big key is to be accountable because you've got to be willing to make these changes to go through this with me. Um, This is not just, you know, me holding your hand and telling you what to do. You actually have to take it. Yes, there is homework (laughs) in the form of, you know, implementing some lifestyle changes. Um, but we check in depending on what the client's comfortable with. It could be weekly. It could be every other week. It could be once a month. Um, and soon I'm actually getting ready to roll out a self-study program for those who maybe don't want the one-on-one coaching, but they will have available you know, access to me even with the self-study program to reach out and ask questions. And get well, thank you so much for your of time course. here again. And remind us again how we can contact you, Andy. Thanks so yep, much. Yep, absolutely. So the website is coachingbyandy.com. So it's coachingbyandee.com. And of course, my Gmail is coachingbyandy at gmail.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here and looking forward to the next time we get to connect. Thanks again. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Jill. I love I'm a great show. Super thorough. We got a lot in today. And uh, I got are we back again next week? 
We are. All right, good, good. I'll keep you posted when I see my doctor, but it's not till um, uh, August something. But still, we'll talk. I, I got to get some more yeah. questions down for him. Thank you so much. Yeah. Or maybe I should no change problem. it to a he. No, I used to have a female, now I have a male, but I'm not crazy about him. Okay, long story short. Sorry, Andy. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Bye-bye. Is menopause or perimenopause making you feel like you're stuck on a sleep-deprived, hot flash, emotional roller coaster? Well, sister, it doesn't have to be this way. Hi, I'm Andy, and I'm a menopause wellness coach at Coaching by Andy. I help women navigate this midlife transition with confidence, humor, and a focus on natural solutions. We'll find ways for you to feel your best naturally, from better sleep to gut health to a balanced mood and glowing skin. So book your free consultation with me at coachingbyandy.com. That's coachingbyandee.com, and let's get started today. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.